Hi, in this lecture we are going to see graph algorithms. Let us start by seeing what is a graph. So a graph is an object which looks like this. Its components are uh, nodes, also known as vertices, which are the circles in this picture. For example, this graph has six nodes. And then we have edges, which are the straight lines. An edge can be undirected as this one, meaning I can go um, back and forth along this edge, or it can be directed like this one, which means it can only be traversed in one direction. Graphs are really pervasive uh, in uh, much of science. They can represent a variety of situations like um, you know, social networks, graphs, uh, uh, streets in cities, and so on. There are uh, two common ways in which you can represent a graph. If you have a graph G with vertices V and edges E, for example, like this one, then you can represent this graph using the adjacency matrix A. This is a matrix square of side length, the number of nodes, and the UV entry of the matrix is one, if and only if the edge UV is present in the graph. The size of this representation is quadratic in the number of nodes, and so this is better suited for dense graphs, graphs in which the number of edges is quadratic in the number of nodes. Here is the adjacency matrix for our example. Okay. So we have three nodes, A, B, C, A, B, C. For example, A does not have an edge to itself, so I put a zero here. A does have an edge to B, so there is a one. A does not have an edge to C, so, so there is a zero. B does have an edge to A, so there is a one here. B does not have an edge to itself, so zero. B does have an edge to C, so there is a one here. C does not have an edge to A, so I have a zero here. C does have an edge to B, so I have a one here. But C does not have an edge to itself, so I have a zero here. A different way in which you can represent graphs uh, is via adjacency lists. Okay. Basically, you're just going to list all the edges of the graph. The size of this representation is order of the number of edges in the graph. And so this is better if the graph is sparse. Sparse meaning the number of edges is linear or close to the number of nodes. In our example, we could represent our graph via adjacency lists as follows. We first list the neighbors of A, which is just B. Then we list the neighbors of B, which is AC. And then we list the neighbors of C, which is just B. In this lecture and in the next ones, we are going to see a, a large number of algorithms um, whose goal uh, is generally to compute the shortest distance in the graph between two nodes. We are going to denote by the Greek letter delta the shortest distance between two nodes. Delta uv is the shortest distance from u to v in a given graph. And if v is not reachable from u, then by convention, we are going to set delta to be infinity. There are many variants that we are going to consider of this problem. We may consider uh, graphs which are unweighted, just like in our previous example, or we may uh, make them more complex by adding weights on the edges. For example, to take into account the length the length of a street, if the graph represents streets. We should also be concerned with the distance from a single node to all other nodes, or, or maybe the distance between every pair of nodes. Generally, the algorithms will proceed by constructing 
a vector or a matrix D, D is going to be an approximation to the distance function delta. Ultimately, at the end of the algorithm, we want that D equals to delta. Okay? The vector or the matrix should contain exactly the true shortest distance. Delta is a value which depends on the graph. Okay? And D is our way to compute it. And also, in general, we are going to be able to maintain a back pointer spy so that we can actually reconstruct the paths that give uh, the shortest distance. The most basic example of search is breadth-first search. Okay, so here the input is a graph G uh, with nodes V and edges E, which is given as an adjacency list. And we're also given a special source node S from V. And the output uh, should be the, the, the distance from S to any other vertex in the graph. Okay, And even if you want to compute a distance from S to just a single node T, then the only uh, known way is to actually compute the distance from S to every other vertex, okay? which is what we will do. The basic idea in the, in the algorithm is to discover vertices at distance k before we discover those at distance k plus 1. And the algorithm is going to color each vertex in one of three different colors. The vertex is going to be white if the vertex is not yet discovered, gray if it was discovered but its neighbors may not be discovered, and black if it was discovered, and also all its neighbors are discovered too. With this basic intuition, we can now write down the breadth-first search algorithm. Okay. BFS on input graph G and node S proceeds as follows. Okay, first of all, we're going to take every vertex U except the start vertex S, and we're going to color them white. We're going to put their distance to infinity, and we're going to put the back pointer to nil, meaning nothing is not yet um, computed. We're going to use a Q, a Q data structure, which remember supports operations NQ and DQ according to the philosophy first in, first out. We're going to color the source gray. We're going to put its distance to zero and its back pointer to nil. And then we're going to um, enqueue S in the Q. And the main loop is this one here. We're going to continue as long as the Q is not empty. We're going to um, DQ. We're going to um, take an element U from the Q. And for each neighbor of V of U, of U for each V in the adjacency list of U, if the color of V is equal to white, meaning it was not discovered yet, you're going to, call, you're going to color it gray you're going to set its distance to the distance of u plus 1, and the back pointer to go to v uh, will point to u. And then we, we, are, and then we are going to enqueue v, we're going to put v in the queue. Once you're done this, for all the neighbors, we're going to finally color u black. And the property that uh, we will want to have is that when we uh, dequeue, when u is taken from the q, this will be a vertex with a minimum distance. Let us see how this works with an example. Here is a graph. The nodes are labeled R, S, T, U, V, W, X, 
y and inside each node I put its distance. Okay, so after we start all the distances are infinity except the one for s which is zero. Below what we have is the queue, the content of the queue. At the beginning we just enqueued s and we also have our array d which we are constructing with the distances okay and at the beginning everything is infinity not shown except the uh, um, distance of s is zero okay in fact i'm just going to show the the value of d for the vertices in the queue okay okay so we start like this so the first thing that we do we're going to dq s okay we're going to go through all its all its uh, neighbors which is uh, these two they're white so we're going to color them gray we're going to set their their distance to one plus zero set the back pointers and enqueue them okay this is what happened then s is done we read what we just said and now the q contains w and r okay and now we repeat and now we take one more element from the queue and we're going to go through all its neighbors okay the element that we took from the queue was w okay um so we uh, set the distance to its neighbors and also enqueue the t and x the next one to, to do is R. The numbers of R are S and V, but S was already discovered, so it's just a matter of uh, V. So V will have distance 2 and it will now be enqueued. The next one to take is T. Among its neighbors, the only one that was not discovered is U, so this thing will get distance 3. Then T, then T will be black and U will be gray. Then we have X. Um, so we will discover now y and set its distance to 3. Then uh, v will just turn black because all of its neighbors are, dis are, di are discovered. u will also turn black and y will also turn black. This is the end of the algorithm. The q is empty uh, and we have computed the distance from s to any other vertex in the graph. What is the running time of this algorithm? Well, recall that NQ and DQ take time constant, and each edge is only visited a constant number of times. So the main loop of the algorithm just costs order of uh, the number of edges. The initialization step costs order of the number of nodes, so the running time is order of uh, v plus e. Okay. This is very good because it's just uh, uh, linear in the size of the, uh, of the input in the adjacency list uh, representation. What about the space? Okay, well, the space of refer search is linear in the number of nodes because you have to mark notes you have to put notes in the in the queue and this thing of course is the best that you can do if you want to compute uh, all the distances from every node uh, for every node um, u from s just to write down all the distances uh, will take your time uh, um, order of uh, phi but uh, um, to end this uh, lecture with the curiosity let us consider what happens if we just want to know if two nodes are connected. Okay, I mentioned earlier that uh, for time, the best known way is that in fact you take a node and you explore the entire graph. So actually, you will find the distance from every um, to every node from from uh, you. Okay, and it takes a lot of space. But if you just care about space, in fact, you can do something uh, better. Okay, so here is a theorem. I'm going to claim that uh, if you give me a graph with n nodes, okay, 
we can decide if two nodes are connected using space which is, which is, which is just order of log square n. Okay? So the time is not going to be very good. Okay? I'm just going to be bounding the space. So, um, you know, if you have graphs uh, which are extremely large that uh, you cannot write down your computer, something like this uh, uh, um, can be useful. And the proof, uh, uh, the algorithm uh, uh, is as follows. So, I'm going to show how to um, decide if you can reach V from you in n steps okay so if the graph has n nodes i will never need to use uh, more than n steps if v is indeed reachable from uh, you and i'm going to give a recursion for this uh, reach operation which uh, can be computed uh, as with a very efficient space okay the way you do it if you want to know if v is reachable from you in n steps uh, you can enumerate all midpoints W, okay, all midpoints, and then you're going to check if you can reach W from U in N over two steps, just half the steps, and also you can reach V from W in N over two steps. If both are uh, true, then you can return yes, otherwise you can return no. This is obviously correct, because if I can go from, v, from U to V in N steps, there has to be a, some midpoint W that you can reach in at most N over 2 steps, and from which you can reach V in at most N over 2 steps. The only question is, what's the space requirement for this? So let's uh, let S of N be the space for reach UVN, and the critical observation is that uh, uh, these algorithms gives this type of uh, regression. S of n um, will be order of uh, log n. This will be the space required to um, keep uh, this node, w, plus s of n over 2. This is the space required for the reach uh, in n over two steps. The critical point is that uh, you do not have twice s of n over two, but just once. It's just once because uh, after you compute the reach, uh, for the next reach, you can uh, reuse the space that was used by this previous reach. Okay, so you do all your computation, you may use a lot of space, uh, but then uh, you can uh, clear, clear everything. All that you need to remember of this reach uh, is whether uh, um, it was a yes or no, it's just one bit of information, and then you can reuse all the space for the computation in this other call to reach. So this is the recursion that uh, you get, and uh, uh, this thing resolves to order of log square n. And one of the most remarkable uh, uh, results uh, um, in theoretical comp computer science um, of recent times was that uh, it's actually possible to improve the space uh, to order of uh, log n for undirected graph. So um, think about it, if I give you a graph with n nodes undirected, how you can decide if two nodes are connected in just space order of uh, log n. Uh, it's actually possible and uh, uh, requires some additional ideas that we're not seeing now.